This is Craig Migliaccio from AEC Surface Tech, and today what we're going over are eight troubleshooting scenarios which we're going to diagnose using our multimeter on our electric training board for HVAC students. So if you're not aware, we have the this whole board, all the parts, the dimensions, how to build this step-by-step -step over at our website at aecsurfacetech.com in the articles and the resource section. So now we're going to get started with our diagnosis. After I set a fault in the board, I don't have the students wiggling the wires or removing faceplates to visually find the problem. I always have them use the multimeter in order to find the problem and then to show me it with the multimeter. We are also using a GFCI plug right here and we're using it as an on off switch and for extra safety during the process. And now we're going to get to our troubleshooting scenario one. So before we get started, right now I have the power off at the GFCI plug and I'm just going to use these buttons to turn it on and off. Right here is air conditioning mode. So once again, the power's off, but if we turn it on cooling and press the uh, temperature down, what should happen is our contactor should suck down and we should have power at the plug so the fan and light will work. And then if we were to just turn the fan on, then we should have power to the fan. And so this is the fan and the sequencer turns the fan on but only during heating mode. So if you were to turn this to heating mode and, and this remains on auto and you turn the heat up, then we should have our light lit. And then after the light lights, uh, lights up, then the fan should turn on. And then when we turn power off, the fan should continue to run for a little bit, just like on a furnace. And then it'll shut off uh, by itself. And that's all due to the sequencer right here. If you want to learn more about each of these components, I've got uh, individual troubleshooting videos in the description section below. Now we're going to get started. We already have our multimeter set on voltage for alternating current. And you can see the squiggly line, that's the sine wave. And so we're going to turn our power on for our first troubleshooting example. Now right now, you can see our thermostat is set on the off position. So the only time the fan should be running is when the thermostat's on the on position. So if we do this, then the fan should be running. In this case, we're not even doing that. So that's a problem. So let's take a look inside here. Oh, you just saw that the fan turned off when I removed the faceplate. So this is likely our problem. Let me just explain to you what is going on here. In the thermostat, we have a jumper between RC and R right here. So we just have our one red wire. So our red wire is coming from our transformer going through our little breaker over to our wiring block right here into the thermostat. So this is our 24 volt power in and our blue wire, that is our common wire and that goes back to the transformer. And so when fan turns on, R, so R and G touch in the thermostat, right in the face here. And when, uh, for R and Y, when those two touch, that's for cooling mode. And what's gonna ha happen in cooling mode is you're also gonna have R and G touch as well. Now for heating mode, you're gonna have R and W touch. And so you can see the white wires on W, yellow for Y and green for G, red for R, and we typically use blue for our common. So what's happening right now is that we should not have any power between uh, our common and our G. So you see we have zero volts. We should have 24 volts, which is actually right around somewhere between like say 28, 29 volts. We have 28 volts between our common and R. We should always have that as long as our uh, transformer is good, we have power, and our, our breaker is not popped. When we put our face in, you can see that if we measure from common to G, we actually have 28 volts when we shouldn't. That means that the R and the G are touching in the thermostat face. So the thermostat face in this case is the problem. Now that we've replaced our thermostat face, we're gonna turn the power back on again. And now we're gonna test the thermostat and make sure all of our settings work. So we're gonna turn our fan on first. So that's good. We can turn our heat on. Looks like heat isn't working. Uh, so let's, uh, we'll test that out. And then let's also test our air conditioning, which is cooling. So you know there's a five minute delay in the thermostat and so it says cool on and it's flashing. And so what we would typically do in the, in the classroom is I wouldn't have the students wait for that five minute delay. 
what I can do is I can just take this off and then we can jump from R to Y. So this would represent our outdoor air conditioning unit. So this would represent the compressor and the condenser fan. Now also what's going to happen is in air conditioning mode this indoor fan is also going to be running but since we're, we took the face off we're just jumping from R to Y instead of from R to both Y and G. Alright so anyway we know that our air conditioning works, our fan works, and we know that our heat does not work. And so let's just jump her from R to W. So uh, we should have, let's just check from our baseline again, from common to R we should have 24 volts, which we have 28 volts now. And we're jumpered over here, R to W. Now if we go from common to W, which is our white wire, we have zero volts. So we know that we have a problem from the thermostat over to here because we should, we should have power uh, right over here, you know. So we know that we have an issue. And so now what we can do is we can go to our resistance and we're going to turn the power off to this assembly and then we're going to check a resistance value. Of course this is not going to be like in real life basically from here to here we should have zero ohms, just like on the green wire we have from here to here. So in real life, what you're going to do is you would, at the uh, furnace right here, you're going to disconnect the white wire and the G wire, and you're going to wire nut them. And then over at the thermostat, you're going to check from here green to your white wire, and then you should have zero ohms, unless one of the wires is bad. So in this case, our white wire is bad, and so we're not getting our signal over to our terminal block in order to, to turn our heat on. So what we can do is see this little brown wire right here? We can use that instead. So we could switch the white wire out with this brown wire both here and over here. And so that's what we would do on a service call. Now that our thermostat wire has been replaced and our multimeter is set back on voltage for alternating current, we're going to turn the power on and we're going to do our test again to find our problem. So fan works, heat doesn't work. So now we're going to go ahead and test. Once again, let's do our baseline from common to or our power. So we have 28 volts. And so if we're on heat, then we can measure from common to W, which is our white wire. And you see we have 28 volts. So now let's go to the other side of the terminal block. And now we can kind of jump along here. We have 28 volts right there and we can follow the wire over to over here. So you can see we have zero volts right there. So you can see that something just happened right now. So it looks like a intermittent problem, maybe a bad connection right here. See we have 26 volts. So it looks like a bad connection right there. So the reason that our fan is turning on is because our sequencer uh, temporarily had enough power to close the top contacts. So let me just explain what's happening here. This is a general purpose relay and it has 24 volts on the side here or it needs 24 volts in the side so we have a hot and a common. In order to close these normally open contacts. So they're normally open like this. When you put power on the side over here, they close. So same thing here, same thing here. So basically for this light bulb to turn on, this switch between this hot wire and this wire, it needs to close. And for this, when these close, it sends 24 volts over to the sequencer. So then you have 24 volt power between here and here. It heats the little uh, disc on the bottom and it ends up pushing a rod and then what happens is these contacts up here they close and then they'll open up after a time increment after this little pan heater cools down at the base and so that's what's happening if you want to learn more you're going to have to look at the general purpose of relay video sequencer video fan relay video and contactor video which are all linked down in the description section below 
So what we found out is that we have a bad connection over here. And so we need to go ahead and replace this wire or at least uh, cut back and recrimp this connector. Now that we recrimped our wire right here, we're going to test out all of our functions. And so turn the power back on and we test our fan first. We'll test our heat second. So our heat is working. It looks like our general purpose relay, if you heard that noise, it may have suffered a little damage due to this bad connection right here. So it would be a good idea to replace this general purpose relay. So we do see that our, our heat is working. And now for air conditioning mode, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the face off and I'm just gonna jump from R to Y with my magnet jumpers. And so these magnet jumpers won't work on these terminals, but they will work on these. I'm just waiting for my fan to shut off. Okay, the fan is shut off now. Let's test from R to Y for air conditioning mode. So you can see our compressor is running, meaning our light. Our fan is not running. And so we know that our contactor must be sucked in and so it's allowing power across here. So let's just, we're gonna measure our high uh, voltage power. So you can see 124 volts there. We wanna make sure that we don't have like a voltage drop or something like that. We have 124 volts there. In order to have that, we would have to have our 24 volts across this uh, contactor right here. So we got our 28 volts. Remember anytime that a technician's talking about 24 volt power, they're really talking about, say, 25 to 28 and a half or 29 and a half. All right, so that's done. Now we'll come over to our outlet. We can get our screws, but we want to make sure to not touch the, uh, the frame right here of the box. So we see 124 volts on the sides of the duplex receptacle. And let's just see right here. Hundred and twenty volts there, so that's not a problem. And as you can see, we have our light lit. We have hundred and twenty-four volts. So we do have power to the fan, so the fan must be a problem. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the power off. We're gonna switch our multimeter to electrical resistance. And let's unplug the fan. And then we're gonna check our resistance. And you see that we are reading OL, which is open line. You could also refer to that as open limit. And so that fan basically would be bad in this scenario. So that's our problem. So we would need to replace this. So, that, you know, the problem could be in the cord. It could just be a burnt cord or something like that. Uh, but in this case, we're just saying that this is the fault. So remember, in an outdoor air conditioning system, it's referred to as your outdoor condenser. You're going to have a contactor there in order to turn on your compressor and your condenser fan. So this represents the condenser fan. This represents the compressor. In this test, I'm not going to bother putting the thermostat face on. I'm just going to use my magnet jumpers. So I'm going to first turn the power on, and then I'm going to jump from R to G. That turns the indoor fan on. And it does that by putting 24 volts over on this side, and then it allows this normally open switch to close. And next, I'm going to go from R to white. And so you can see we have 24 volts over here, and it's closing this switch, allowing power to here, and closing this switch, allowing 24 volts over to the sequencer pan. It's heating up the pan, and then after that, this switch closes, allowing the fan to turn on. So that works and our fan is going to continue to run because of our sequencer sequence meaning time uh, so it has a longer time for the delay off than it does for the delay on for this top section right here and then next what we're going to do is we're going to go from r to y and we heard our contactor click but we don't see our compressor or our fan running so which is our, our light and our fan and so what we're going to do is we're going to come over here first and we're going to measure to see if we have 24 volts. You see we are measuring 28 volts right here. 
And we should because we have R to Y, so we should have 24 volt power here, which you see that 24 volt power here. And then you can follow it over to that yellow wire on the side of the contactor. And then you just move this probe over to the common. So what I did before is I just kind of jumped right over to here. And so we know we have power at the coil of the contactor. And then we have a separate high power right here. And, and just so you know, this is our connection point for all of our hots and all of our common neutrals. And so this is a normally open switch and it's supposed to close when you have 24 volts on the coil. So we have 120 volts there and let's see over here. We've got nothing. And so no volts and so that's a problem. If we go from here to here, you can see the difference is 124 volts. That does not mean that this has power. That means that this has power and this is at zero and the difference between them is 124 volts. And so this switch is not closed. So because of this, we know that our contacts in here must be bad on our contactor. And so this whole contactor ends up getting replaced. Now I just wanna state this real quick and the statement really is that the 24 volt circuit is gonna be separate from the high voltage circuit. So that's true for our contactor, for our fan relay, for our sequencer, and for this general purpose relay. So the 24 volts right here is not in the same uh, circuit, it's not touching the high voltage one. So I, I need you to know that this switch path is separate from this switch path. So this switch path is controlled by the 24 volts on the pan heater pushing a rod. So you're pushing contacts closed and open. Same thing here, it's an electrical magnet, it's 24 volts, and the electrical magnet sucks the contacts together. This is an electrical magnet as well, when you apply 24 volts, it closes the contacts right here. So this, this, and this are electrical magnets. This uses a base pan heater and a rod in order to open and close the contacts. Now that the contactor's been replaced, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the power back on and we're gonna use our mag jumpers. We're gonna go from R to G. So that works. Let's go from R to W. That works. And let's just wait for our fan. Should be turning on soon if it is gonna work. And, oh, there it goes, okay. And then our last one is going to go from R to Y. And now we're going to go from R to Y. So I don't know if you can see this. Hopefully you can, but our little popper just tripped, which is our 3 amp uh, circuit breaker. So typically you're going to have a fuse there, and if that pops, then you got to trace down where the short is actually at. And so let's go ahead and take these off first. And in order to do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change and go over to resistance. And I don't know if you've noticed that, but it only happened when we went from R to Y, which means that our problem is somewhere is on our Y circuit. So we already know that. And so it's not like we just turned the power on and the circuit breaker popped immediately. It popped only during air conditioning mode and not even during the fan. So with the power off, we're gonna pull our yellow wire out. And now we could turn this back on, but let's just, once again, just check this. In the field, we don't have a circuit breaker, we have fuses. And so we don't want fuse after fuse after fuse to pop. We need to kind of cut, cut the wiring in half and test until we find the direction which our problem is. Now, let's also make sure we're jumpered again from R to Y, and I know the power is off right now. We're reading the resistance of our transformer, which is about two ohms. So that's fine, so we, we're, we're fine at two ohms. Now if we measure from here to ground, we see we have a problem. So you can see we're measuring 0.1 ohms. So now we're gonna disconnect from our contactor. And 
<clears throat> so if we measure on the side of the contactor to ground, we're probably going to be measuring the resistance value of the contactor, but the contactor itself could be shorted to ground. In this case, we're measuring 16.7 ohms, so that's not the issue. And we would have that same measurement even if we were to disconnect our common wires. The whole point of why we were measuring to, to ground was because of our common wire connections. So if we measure from here to here, you're going to see once again about 16.7 ohms. So it seems that our wire is actually the problem. So you can see we're measuring 0.1 ohms. So it is just the, the yellow wire. So that one must have chafed along the frame right here. So this is our ground frame. And so it must be rubbing up against there. And so that wire, the yellow wire, needs to be replaced. We have our multimeter on voltage and we're going to turn our power back on. And then we're going to use our magnet jumpers. But before we even got to use these, you see our little popper has tripped again. So if this is a fuse, that would mean it's a blown fuse. So what we're going to need to do is we'll turn the power off and we're going to turn our multimeter to resistance. And so because we didn't use these, we know our problem is not on the W, Y, or G circuits. The problem is directly on the R circuit. We know the problem is not on the common circuit because if we go from C to ground, so let's just go right here, you can see we have 0.2 ohms, which is normal. And so that's because of this wire right here. So that's going directly to ground. And so we know that that's not the issue. Our issue is with our R wire to ground. And so you can see we have 0.1 ohms there. So that is, that is our issue. Now what we need to do is separate the R wire. We're going to do that right here on the terminal block. And so once again, the power is off. We can just go ahead and unscrew this right here. And we're going to separate the thermostat and thermostat wiring from the basically the cabinet wiring. So now we're going to go from here to here. And you see we have no ohms. Now once again we could go ahead and reset this. And you see we have 1.2 ohms. Now, that would be the same thing as if we went from right across this transformer from R to our common. So we see that our transformer has a certain amount of resistance on that coil. What we're looking for is 0 0.0, 0 0.1, or maybe even 0 0.2. And so let's go from here to ground. You can see 0 0.3, 0 0.2 ohms. So that's our problem right there is with our thermostat wire running from our thermostat to the terminal block. So this R wire from here to here needs to be replaced. We can do that with our extra wire, which is actually our brown wire, or just run a whole new thermostat wire. So now we're going to turn the power back on, and we're going to check everything with our magnet jumpers. We're going to go from R to G. So our fan works, R to W. So I hear the general purpose relay buzzing, but I don't see the light right here. And let's see if the, the fan turns on for heating mode, which it does. So now we know we have 24 volts here because then that means we have 24 volt power coming over to here to power the base pan heater because we see the fan running. Uh, but let's just take our measurements just in case we're getting an odd voltage. So we're getting 27 volts there. And so let's just make sure if we have our 120 volts from here to our common, we have 124 volts there. We have 124 volts there. And so the next thing we'll do in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna unscrew this bulb and we're going to measure inside. So we have a little brass tab and then we have our side. And so you can see we're measuring 17 volts. So something's wrong internally inside this box because we see that we do have power here to our common. So let's just check this for a sec. So I'm going to keep this probe on our common. This brass tab should be on the hot 
Okay, so that's 120 volts, so it looks like our hot wire is intact. And now let's go on this hot right here and to the common and see if that's the issue. Which now we see that that is the issue. It seems to be our common wire is the problem because we are not measuring 120 volts now. But when we measure from our hot inside the lamp to our common, we do get 120 volts. So we need to check out what's going on inside here and fix this. So this is the problem right here, this lamp holder. I hope this video helped you understand how to troubleshoot using these eight scenarios on our electric board. And if you want to learn how to make this board, we have the full layout, the step-by-step -step instructions, the wiring diagram, the measurements, all over at acservicetech.com in the article section and the resource section. Also, if you want to learn more about HVAC, you can take some, some quizzes, you can use some of our calculators, you can read some of our articles and quick tips all over at acservicetech.com as well as our Refrigerant Charging and Service Procedures for Air Conditioning book. And so hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech channel.